January 20th, 2018. Uh, this video is the start of a new series on how to set up a Raspberry Pi to monitor and control uh, greenhouses, barns, cabins, carports, pretty much anything you'd want to monitor temperatures on or humidity or any other set of parameters really. Um, and uh, eventually if you want to add controls, uh, we'll get to that. Uh, I just want to pause for a moment here and say that uh, YouTube has changed its policy. I'm sure uh, most people are well aware of that at this point. Um, and I was a little frustrated at first. I was considering pulling my YouTube channel altogether, but um, I realized that that wouldn't be fair to my subscribers. And, uh, and uh, you know, ultimately that's kind of a loser mentality. So I'm going to go forward and make better videos and do more, and hopefully we'll get more subscribers. Um, I do have a Patreon account set up. I uh, haven't really officially launched that yet, um, but I will be doing so in the next month or so, and I would appreciate anyone who can uh, help support this channel so we can continue to educate you about farming and so many other things related to farming. Um, that said, we're going to put that whole topic down and move on. This video is the introduction video for uh, how to set up a Raspberry Pi to monitor your greenhouse, barn, or whatever you want to monitor. Um, there's a whole bunch of tools and a whole bunch of things you'll need, so let's get started. Uh, first off, um, if you want to use a Raspberry Pi, you'll obviously need a Raspberry Pi. I highly recommend the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, the price is not much different from the Pi 2, and the Pi 3 has a significantly faster processor. Um, I believe it's 1.2 gigahertz 4 core, if I'm correct on that, and I think it's 2 gigs of RAM. Might be 1. I don't remember specifically, but uh, so you'll need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you want to collect uh, temperature data, you'll need something called a DS18B20 uh, digital one wire sensor. Uh, that's what I'm using. I actually have, I think, uh, 28 of those. It might be 30 or 32 set up in the greenhouse, monitoring all different temperatures of all different parts of the greenhouse. Um, then, if you want to do humidity, you'll need an Adafruit DHT22 sensor. Uh, let's see, I guess I should uh, just mention pricing on these a little bit. A Raspberry Pi computer board will cost you about 35 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I highly recommend you get the, the package deal. They have a package deal on uh, the Raspberry Pi, a 32 meg SD card, and the 2.5 amp 5 volt power supply. I highly recommend the package deal on that. I think I picked that whole package up for about 55 bucks. Uh, well worth it. Then you're set on power supply and uh, and all the, the little pieces that you need just for the pie. Um, I will try and find and provide a link on the uh, digital one-wire temp sensors. Uh, the pricing on those tends to vary pretty greatly depending on where you buy from. I think the best price I found was... It was either Amazon or eBay. I can't remember which, but I will dig up the link and I will put that down in the description of the video here. Um, so those are the basic components you'll need to get started. I highly recommend if you're going to add a whole bunch of sensors, um, or even if you're not, it's probably well worth it. Uh, you get this one here called the Easy Connect, uh, and I guess we'll just jump to these quick. This is a, a close-up of a Raspberry Pi board. Um, they're about the size of a pack of cigarettes. You'll notice they have four USB ports. They have a 100 megabit per second, or it might be a thousand. I think it's 100 uh, Ethernet port. And the Raspberry Pi 3 actually has an onboard Wi-Fi chip, so you can actually do wireless right from the board as well. It has a, an HDMI output, uh, an audio output, and uh, this here is the power input. And this is a 40-pin header right here. <clears throat> That's where all your connections for GPIO, the one-wire sensors, relay boards, all that sort of stuff come in and out. And uh, over here, there's a connector. This is for a uh, high-resolution camera, Raspberry Pi camera. So you could add that on if you wanted to monitor uh, visually. And you can actually capture... Uh, um, you know, uh, progress time lapse pictures with it, or you can capture time lapse video. Um, we can get into that later on in this uh, course or series of videos. Um, so that's a Raspberry Pi. 
Uh, this is a relay board like you would use if you wanted to control things like uh, a water pump for circulating heat or a fan for circulating air or for venting air um, or really anything you'd want to control uh, electrically, electronically, etc. Uh, this is an 8 relay board and this has uh, the little header pin just like the Raspberry Pi does. There's 10, I think 10, 9 or 10 uh, connector points on here and they'll connect to the Raspberry Pi board and so you can interface uh, the Raspberry Pi to work with the uh, 8 relay board and control whatever you want. Uh, that's just a thumbnail for this video. This is the Adafruit DHT22 sensor. Uh, it's made by Atmel. It's an Atmel 2302 uh, humidity and temperature sensor. Uh, these are not one wire. These are uh, I squared C, I think. Or, or actually I think they're a hybrid of I squared C and serial or something like that so each one of these needs to have its own GPIO port if you're not familiar what I mean by that we will get into that uh, later in the series um, anyway if you want to record uh, humidity uh, you'll need one of these uh, uh, Adafruit does make one called a DHT11 uh, I tried that uh, they were pretty horrible uh, the DHT22 so far has been reliable and uh, and was much easier to work with uh, so I highly recommend getting the DHT22 I think these run for about 10 bucks a piece uh, this is a close-up of a group of the one wire sensors these are the D S18B20 one wire digital sensors. Um, they are a stainless steel case with a, um, a digital uh, sensor chip in the case and uh, the link that I'll provide you is for a uh, it's these sensors in their waterproof stainless case like this with a one meter waterproof line so you could actually drop uh, you know about I don't know, about 30 inches or so of this down into a tank of water if you wanted to monitor a tank of water. Um, they do make them with longer uh, longer wire leads if you need longer waterproofing or have deeper tanks or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're willing to spend the money, I, I would actually recommend that you get the longer ones if you want to run longer runs back into your uh, to your uh, Pi controller. Um, but if not, uh, you can always run uh, Cat 3 wire, uh, which is just an equivalent of a Cat 5 E wire, except it's not twisted. Uh, I think there's uh, four or eight twisted pair in there or something like that. Anyway, uh, this is what the sensor looks like, and uh, these work great. They're pretty reliable. Uh, even the one that I have in boiling water for about six months out of the year, they seem to last that. Uh, I get about a year out of them in, in boiling water. Uh, the other ones, uh, knock on wood, I have not had to replace yet, with the exception of one or two that went bad. Uh, this is the Pi Easy Connect board on top of a Raspberry Pi. They're set up to actually plug right into that 40 pin header board I was showing you before. And uh, you'll notice this has all these screw terminals around it. And there's actually a breadboard soldering board right in here. So, for example, on the one wire sensors, you actually have to put a, uh, a resistor uh, in parallel between power and data uh, in order to. Uh, in order to c correctly connect those one wire digital temperature sensors up and uh, this board actually provides you a place to solder that right in here rather than to have it out on the wire um, it's just a much nicer, nicer and neater way to bring all those pieces together um, alright so I think that's the basic components that you'll need covered um, what other things are we going to go into well <clears throat> uh, you'll notice that this is a graphing chart here. Uh, this is, I'm using a program called Time. It's called SQL Dashboards. It's by a company called timestored.com. Um, it is a free software package. Uh, however, none of your settings are kept, like for example, your server settings. None of those are kept when you close the program. Uh, if you pay the company 50 bucks, you can use the program and it'll save your settings. I don't plan to do that. Uh, at some point over this winter, I plan to go full 
forward and make a JavaScript page and serve all of this chart data out uh, directly by HTML with Apache web server right from the Pi. Uh, I haven't gotten into the code of that yet. I've got a friend who's going to help me uh, help me get that set up because he's much more proficient in writing code and that sort of thing than I am. Um, so at some point uh, that will be added to this series as well. Uh, at the moment, this is a great way to chart data if uh, if you're not super familiar with web page code and JavaScript and uh, PHP and databases. It's it's a lot of information to learn for sure. So this is a fairly simple way to do it. I'll just uh, come out of full screen mode here and show you. We use uh, MySQL query statements to do this sort of stuff. So you'll notice I'm just pulling this data from the database on the Pi, and uh, I can select whatever variables I want and have them charted out directly in here. And you'll notice I have different charts. Uh, I have one for BTUs and storage. I have one for the different sensors in the greenhouse. And this chart here is not all of the sensors. Like As I said, there's 28 or 30 sensors, something like that. And it just becomes confusing. So I only have the base sensors that I need on. And when I really want uh, more information, I can go back and change this SQL query statement and get whatever data that I want. Uh, I also have another pie in the house here. And that's monitoring uh, my my wood stove inside and a thermal mass that's attached to that and uh, temperature inside the house. You'll notice it's a little chilly in here. This place is not well insulated. So anyway, uh, I think that gives you a basic I idea and understanding of uh, the charting part of this. Um, some other pieces of software you'll need are a program called Putty. Uh, you can just go online and look that up. It's P-U-T-T-Y, Putty. Uh, it's a real simple SSH uh, program for logging into the Pi remotely. Um, I'll just show you real quick here. Uh, sorry, just a sec. All right, so this is Putty. Bring it up, <clears throat> and you can you pick the IP address that you're after. You can save settings. So, for example, this is the Greenhouse Pi, and it's IP and it's port, and we'll set to SSH, and we just go in, and it asks us for a username and a password. And then if you have to do anything... Uh, well, a lot of the stuff uh, that you'll be learning to do, you'll need to be logged in as root. So you log in as root, like that. And now we're in. And then, for example, I can look at uh, the sensors that are attached to the Pi and see if they're all online and functional, uh, or at least see if the Pi is recognizing them simply with uh, listing the directory that they're in. And uh, it comes back and lists all the addresses and all the sensors. Um, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 3 is 18, 24, 23 currently connected. Oh, that's right. I had a couple uh, where my connections went bad, and I just dropped the whole leg because they were inside soil sensors. So yeah, I guess uh, there's 23 sensors on there right now. Um, I have successfully had up to 32 without any problems, and uh, I am looking to expand beyond that. I just haven't had a chance to get back to that. Anyway, that said, uh, another tool that you'll definitely want and need is a tool called MySQL Query Browser. Um, I will put links in the description both uh, for all of these programs, for Time Stored, for Putty, for MySQL Query Browser, all that sort of stuff. Again, you'll notice we're using simple MySQL statements to grab the data that we want from the database. Um, you, you, can, you can really manipulate anything you want, really. Uh, I'll just real quickly go in here and show you... Uh, Make default schema. Show you how to uh, edit tables. <clears throat> I won't go into the details on this yet. I just want to show you that you can add and take away uh, sensors, basically places to log sensors. They're uh, they correlate to each sensor, so you'll notice there's a lot of sensors in here. Um, and uh, and each each uh, table has to be set up, or each uh, row has to be set up correctly. Uh, you know, like for example, uh, uh, the east low sensor here. You notice that's in decimal five comma two, and and uh, we've only taken it to two decimal places. 
Um, so anyway, so this is an easy way to manipulate manipulate setting up the database to add sensors or uh, or um, to make changes in the database without having to know a whole lot of uh, uh, MySQL code, uh, which can be rather tricky. Um, and, and rather complex. It's a very flexible way of doing things, but it's also, uh, it, it, that doesn't come without complications. Anyway, uh, so this is just a basic brief intro. Uh, so you want MySQL Query Browser, and uh, and you can see in here, uh, I just pulled uh, the last 1,440 minutes of log. My my greenhouse pie logs every minute on the minute, uh, so I can see pretty much in real time uh, changes in temperature in the greenhouse, what's going on with the wood stove, the thermal masses, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've only pulled the last 1,440 uh, things because that's one day, basically. Uh, but you can see... Uh, it gives you the date, time, uh, the sensor, what the sensor's value was, and uh, we can just go right on over all the way. There's quite a few in there. What else? Um, let's see. Uh, so basically, we're gonna we're gonna go over uh, how to set up a Raspberry Pi, pretty much from scratch uh, to log data. Um, including temperatures and humidity. It doesn't have to be temperatures and humidity. Obviously, this could be modified to log whatever type of data you wanted, as long as you can come up with a sensor for the data that you're after. Uh, if you can't find a digital sensor, of course, you could always uh, get an analog sensor and then use an analog to digital converter. Um, I personally have not done that yet, but I have a friend who has. He's very familiar with that kind of thing. And so uh, if there's a demand or a request for it, uh, we may we may go into that as well. Um, other things that uh, probably we'll expand to in the future, I do eventually want to get one of those uh, Accurate weather stations or, uh, well, I'd like a Davis weather station actually, but they're quite expensive. The Accurates are a fairly cheap uh, version of that. Uh, at some point, I will be getting one of those and adding it to the Greenhouse Pi data logger and we'll figure out how to capture the data from that and pump it into the database as well so you can have all of your data collected into one database. Um, this Raspberry Pi has been running in the greenhouse with the exception of a few downtimes in the summer uh, when I was too busy to get back in there and, and get it fixed and working again. Uh, it's been running since February of 2016 and I have data logged all the way through from February of 2016. Um, another program that you'll find very useful is a program called Bitvice SSH Client. I find this is a great way to FTP into the Pi and download backups and that sort of thing. Uh, for example, uh, I've set the Pi up so that it creates a backup every 12 hours every day. Um, the Solar One SQL is uh, today's backup. You'll notice by the date that that was taken today at 8.31 p.m. and it's 235 megabytes. Yes, that's megabytes. Uh, I'm collecting a tremendous amount of data and this, uh, this keeps growing. Uh, at some point in the future, probably we'll be going to a new style of database, uh, which will be a little nicer and a little more flexible and use a little less space. Uh, but for now, this will get you started. So um, I hope that I've covered all the pieces that I wanted to cover in this video, uh, and I hope if uh, there are people out there that have interest that you'll like, subscribe, and comment below. Um, <clears throat> I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear your questions, and I'd love to answer them for you. So uh, if this sort of thing interests you and you want to follow along in this series, uh, I'd love to have your subscription. Um, None of this stuff is free or easy or cheap to do. Uh, I'm doing this out of my own time and out of my own pocket right now. Uh, <laughs> and I can tell you, I'm working on about a half a shoestring budget. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I've managed to find a way to do it. Uh, it's a very valuable tool for me. It saves me from having to go out and check on the greenhouse and see where things are at. I can, at a glance on my screen, uh, see what's going on out there. And if it needs a stoke, I can just go stoke it. And if it doesn't, I can just let it ride. It probably saves me 100 trips a day to the greenhouse and back. Um, 
So, anyway, uh, I hope that you'll find this interesting or intriguing, and that you'll uh, join us on the uh, this journey. This will be a whole series of videos on how to use Raspberry Pi, and how to set it up, and how to set up a database, and all those little uh, all those little pieces that are involved or uh, that correspond to that. So, with that said, uh, thank you for watching the video, uh, and I hope that you'll join us. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.